Good health to all from Rexall. It's the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show, presented by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist with a welcome from the 10,000 independent druggists who have made the word Rexall part of our own store names. You can always tell us by the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows. The sign means that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. Many of you are already familiar with some of these famous products, like MI-31, for example, Rexall's popular mouthwash. MI-31 is the antiseptic formula that kills contacted germs almost instantly when used full strength. And quality like that of Rexall MI-31 is what we family druggists are talking about when we tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Fay and Phil Harris. <laughs> After spending a few exciting weeks in New York, the Harris family has returned to California. As we look in, we find Alice, Phil, and the children in a taxi just pulling away from the station. Oh, it's good to be back in California. There's no place like it. Oh, I don't know. New York's certainly an interesting city. They got a lot of historical landmarks there, and Frankie and me visited every one of them. We discovered some very educational and invaluable facts. Like what? Well, they have one public library, 672 pool rooms, <laughs> and 5,823 bars, <laughs> of which 4,700 are heated. Um, how did the library get in there? Oh, well, that's where we used to meet before we went to the interesting spots. <laughs> well, for your information, there are 108 public libraries in New York. There are also 46 museums, 18 colleges, 81 high schools, and 542 elementary schools. Ooh, this kid's a regular stasimatesna. <laughs> <laughs> Say, tell me something. If they got so many schools there, why don't nobody go to them? Oh, what do you mean? Nobody knows how to talk English there. <laughs> Everybody sounds like Julius. <laughs> and as for their grammar, ugh. <laughs> it's a city of eight million dangling participles. <laughs> I'm glad we got the kids out of that town before they started talking like New Yorkers. Oh, don't be silly. They don't talk any differently than we do. Girls, did you notice anything unusual about the way New Yorkers talk? Nah. I didn't notice nothing. Did you, Phyllis? <laughs> they talk just like other people. They so it and they don't, dearie. <laughs> Thank you, Leo DeRosha and Broadway Rose. <laughs> Alice, I won't have my children talking like that. I want you to see that they stop it right now or I'll... All right, all right. Keep your joint on, Coily. <laughs> Somehow from you, it sounds natural. <laughs> I'm glad we're back in California where people talk the king's English. I'm tired of hearing people talk like they were born in Ebbets Field. Hey, driver... Are you sure you know how to get to Encino? Certainly, Mac. What are you asking? I go up fort and make a left turn on third. <laughs> Say, Alice, uh, I was a little hazy when we left New York. Uh, we didn't take this cab all the way from Brooklyn, did we? <laughs> of all the cab drivers in Los Angeles, we got to get one from New York. Hey, what makes you think I'm from New York? I just took a shot in the dark. You are from Brooklyn, aren't you? Of course not. 
Then where are you from? Stromboli. <laughs> Stromboli. Hey, bud. Bill! Uh, well, I could have sworn you were from England. <laughs> I am. Churchill Downs, to be exact. Anyway, what's the matter with New York? We got some very nice folks there. Where are you from? I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, sir. <laughs> oh, a hillbilly. <laughs> oh, I was wondering why you didn't have no shoes on. I've got shoes on. They're a beautiful canary color. Those are shoes? I thought you had yellow jaundice at the feet. <laughs> I can't stand people who always knock in New York. I agree with you, driver. I think it's a lovely city. Eh, what would a hillbilly like you know about it? Oh, I was born and raised in New York. You was? Well, come on, sit up front with me, Blondie. Get away from boil eyes. <laughs> All the nerve talking to my wife like that And Alice stopped climbing over the seat <laughs> Just getting ready to get out uh, Driver, this is our house right here Thank goodness Oh man, home at last Yeah How much is the fare, driver? Uh, one pound, nine shillings, six pence, halfpenny <laughs> Well, Benita, don't stand there Throw a quid on this peasant <laughs> Sorry, Ronnie, but I don't have a farthing. All right, all right. Cut the stall, and I want $4.80. But look, I don't have it. I spent my last penny on the train. Go ahead, Alice. Pay the man. I pay can't, him. Phil. I can't. I spent all my money shopping in New York. You couldn't have spent all your money. <laughs> <laughs> all you did was buy a few little things, like the Empire State Building and Radio City. <laughs> I, I forgot to tell you, honey. They had a sale at Macy's, and I couldn't resist it. What did you buy? Macy's. <laughs> now, look, driver, why don't you run along and we'll send you a check, huh? Yeah, yeah, William, because my wife and me happen to be a little short. I'll stick around till you grow. <laughs> I don't want no checks. I want my money, and I ain't leaving till I get it. Wait, I have a way of settling this. You see, driver, uh, I'm Phil Harris, the entertainer. And, uh, well, uh, <laughs> I don't, uh, like to brag, but, uh, people pay as much as five dollars to hear me sing. No. <laughs> yeah. And I thought that if I were to sing for you, we could call it square. What do you say? I don't want no song. The meter says 480, and that's what I want. You'll forget what that meter says when you hear this. Now, just sit on the running board and relax, Winston. Have you ever passed the corner of Fourth and Grand? Where a little ball of rhythm runs a shoeshine stand? People gather round and they clap their hands He's a great big bundle of joy He pops a boogie woogie rag The Chattanooga shoe shine boy He charges you a nickel just to shine one shoe Makes the oldest kind of leather look like new Feel as though you want to dance when he gets through Cause he's a great big bundle of joy He pops a boogie woogie rag the Chattanooga shoe shine boy, but it's a wonder that that rag don't tap the way he makes it pop. Mm, bop! You ought to hear him fan in the air. The hoppity hippity hippity hoppity hoppity hippity hop. He opens up for business when the clock strikes nine. He wants to get him early. He says that's when it's feeling fine. If Everybody gets a little rise and shine with that great big bundle of joy. He whops a boogie woogie rag, the Chattanooga shoe shine boy. Oh boy, that's fine. Say, what's your name? Scatman Roth. Scatman Roth, huh? Mm-hmm. But you can just call me Roth. Well, I'm gonna say one thing, Roth. You laid down a lot of cloth, But it's a wonder 
that that rag don't tap the way he makes it snap and zap. You ought to hear him pan in the air with a slappy wap bap, slappy wap bap, slappy wap bap, do with a bap bap de bap. He opens up for business when the clock strikes nine. He says, I love to get them early, so that's when they're feeling fine. Everybody gets a little rise and shine with that great big bundle of joy. He whops a boogie woogie rag, the Chattanooga shoe shine boy. Uh, boss, this is what you call flogging the flow shine. Yeah? Yeah. Say, what would you do if I'd lay down a half? Oh, man, a half would make me laugh. <laughs> Cause he's a Chattanooga shoe shine bar. Well, driver, what does the meter say now? Six fifty. It took your tempo. <laughs> Oh, a Milton Berle meter, huh? <laughs> Look, will you wait here, driver? Alice, let's get in the house and call Frankie and tell him to bring over some money for this guy. Uh, look, uh, you don't mind trusting us for a little while, do you? Nah, you got an honest face. Well, thank you. Come on, children, come in the house. Hold it, they stay with me till I get my money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how do you like that guy? Well, don't blame him. This is your fault. You should have known better than to come home without any money. You have no sense of responsibility. You don't stop to think. You, you, you... Oh, I should have married Sam Heffelmeyer. <laughs> well, maybe you should have married... Who in the heck is Sam Heffelmeyer? I don't know, but I should have married him. Well, it wouldn't have worked. It sounds silly. What would sound silly? Rexall presents Alice Faye and Sam Heffelmeyer. <laughs> Alice, I'm sorry about this, but as soon as we get in the house, I'll... Uh, wait a minute. Now, what are all them bottles of milk doing on the porch, Mrs. Heffelmeyer? Milk? I... Oh, I guess I forgot to tell the milkman we were going away. You don't hate me, do you, dear? No. But I'm mulling it over. <laughs> a week's supply of milk gone sour. How can you do a thing like that? But, Phil, it's only milk. Only milk? I'll thank you to show more respect for my favorite liner. <laughs> <laughs> now let's get in the house and call Frankie. Alice, how can you be so forgetful? It's a good thing you gave me the checks to mail for the gas and electric companies. Or you would have forgotten to do that, too. I got to be the brains for the whole family. Kind of dark in here. Turn the lights on. Yes, dear. Well, turn the lights on. I've got news for you, Brains. <laughs> no lights. Let me at that switch. What do you mean, no lights? <laughs> no lights. Well, are you sure you mailed the check to the electric company? Well, the... Well, not personally. I gave it to Frankie to mail and... Oh, no. <laughs> no. He probably forgot to mail oh, it. Oh, no, he didn't. When he got to New York, I looked in the pocket of his suit, and it was gone. He probably has it in the pocket of his other suit. What other suit? <laughs> <laughs> now, there must be some mistake. I'll take care of that later. Right now, I better call Remley and tell him to get over here with some money for that cab. There's no telling what... Hiya, Curly. Hiya, Frankie. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Give me $5 so I can pay for my cab. <laughs> My car wouldn't start, so I came over from my house in a taxi. All right, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. From your house to my house only costs a dollar and a half. Why do you need five? I'm a big tipper. <laughs> Stop stalling. Give me the fence. I ain't got it. In fact, I got my own cab outside that I'm in hock to. Frankie, before we left for New York, Phil gave you some letters to mail. What happened to them? Nothing happened to them. They're all safe in my bureau drawer. <laughs> Frankie. Hmm? Those were the checks to pay for the utility. Now they've turned my lights off, and I told you two months ago that I got a letter from them, and we were in arrears, and they were sending me threatening letters. That's why I didn't mail the check. <laughs> I didn't like the electric company's attitude. 
I don't like people who threaten my friends. All right, wait a minute. Now, just hold it a minute. We're not getting anywhere this way. I'd better phone Willie and tell him to get over here with some money for that cab. Give me the phone. Curly. Hello, operator. Curly. Operator. Curly. Quiet, Frankie. I'm trying to use the phone. The only way you can use that phone is to make a lamp out of it. <laughs> what do you mean? I didn't like their attitude either. <laughs> Frankie, you mean you didn't mail the phone bill? I couldn't show any partiality. Oh, no. <laughs> we ain't got no money, we ain't got no lights, and we ain't got no phone. You ain't got no gas, too. <laughs> you got the gas shut off, too? Oh, Remley. I'm so mad I could boil you alive. I'd like to see you try it without water. <laughs> The water, too? When I get mad, I go whole hog. <laughs> Remley, I ought I to... did it for you and Alice, Curly. Those companies were threatening you. And I defend the people I love. Love I got, it's gas we need. <laughs> Remley, how can you do these things to me? What's the matter with you? No, anyway, no, 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 you no, going... Phil, 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 don't shout at Frankie. He said he did it because he loves us. Uh, do you really feel that way about us, Frankie? Of course I do. I love Curly like a brother. And as for you, Alice, I love you as if you were my own mother. Oh. <laughs> I'm not old enough to be your mother. In fact, I'm barely old enough to be your sister. All right, I love you as if you were my own sister. The married one with the two grown sons. Oh. <laughs> there was only some way to get out of here so I could get enough money to take care of that tech. Hey, wait a minute. I forgot I have a car in the garage. Come on, Remley, drive over to Willie's with me so I can get the dough. Why do I have to drive over with you? I might have an accident and I don't want you to miss it. <laughs> hey, honey, we'll be back soon, don't worry. But Phil, what am I gonna do while you're gone? What you rehearsed all morning. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. Wonderful, marvelous. What I love to see oh. My dear It's four-leaf clover time From now on my heart's working overtime Oh, it's wonderful Marvelous That you should care for So soon. My battery needs recharging. Well, you're getting older and I... <laughs> Oh, honey, you mean the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You see, I haven't used the car in three weeks and the battery's dead. Now I haven't any way of getting in town. Oh, if our phone wasn't disconnected, it'd be so simple. In that case, let's connect it. What do you mean, and how many years can we get for what you got in mind? <laughs> Curly, please. You know I wouldn't get involved in anything illegal. All you have to do is a little wiretapping. Wiretapping? Yeah. Let's climb up the telephone pole outside the house, connect your phone to the wire, and you can call Willie. Frankie, you're another Einstein. <laughs> so, we'll run as an entry. <laughs> Fellas, 
wiretapping is against the law. Alice, please. Now, let's get started, Curly. I'll take the phone, you get a ladder and some long wire, and I'll meet you outside by the pole. Okay. Hey, Remley. Hmm? It's kind of high up here on top of this pole. Ooh, I'm getting dizzy. Well, don't look down, you'll be all right. Here you are, Curly. Take this knife and scrape that wire. <laughs> then attach it to the one we brought up. And we're in business. Okay, I'll scrape. Hmm? Um, scraping this wire uh, couldn't be dangerous, could it? That's a very stupid question. <laughs> All they got up here is telephone wires. You're sure, huh? Well, if you don't believe me, there's a sign above the wire that tells you what it is. See what it says. Okay. Uh-oh, this ain't gonna help. Just has the name of the fellow who put the pole up. Some guy named High Tension. <laughs> High Tension! <laughs> Remley, do you realize if I'd have touched that wire like you told me, I could have been killed? So I made a little mistake. Little mistake. <laughs> Stuff going through that wire is powerful. It's over a hundred proof. <laughs> well. Now that you prove this other one is a telephone wire, I'll scrape it. Go ahead. Yeah. Now to attach this long wire from the phone. Yes, I meant to ask you about that. Just a minute. Now, why did you leave the phone down below? Why didn't we bring it up here? Because I don't want anybody to see us making a call up here on the pole. <laughs> you never can tell when hey, someone... who is that up there? Uh -oh. <laughs> it's me and Mr. Remley. What are you doing up there? We're making a phone call <laughs> These guys got a corner on stupid answers <laughs> What do you mean you're making a phone call? Not so loud, Julius <laughs> We're tapping a wire That's right, and as long as you're down there You can help us out, kid now pick up the phone and see if you can get the operator. You got to hook. Okay. Go on. Hello, operator. Hold the wire, lady. Hey, fellas. Ain't wire tapping against the law? <laughs> <laughs> Don't people get sent to jail for this? Only if they get caught, but we ain't getting caught. You want to bet? <laughs> Julius, you're a nice kid. You wouldn't turn us in. I'm a little louse and I would, too. <laughs> I'm ready to get me the police. Curly, let's climb down the ladder and get him quick. If I was you, I wouldn't climb down this broken ladder. What makes you think it's broken? Could I have that straight line again? <laughs> He kicked the ladder away. Why, the little demon, I ought to Not kick you. Not too loud up there. I can't hear him on the phone. Hello, hello. Police headquarters, Riley speaking. This is a civic-minded citizen calling to report two wiretappers. Wiretappers, huh? Do you think they're spies? Oh, I don't think they're spies. What do they look like? Well, one looks like Stalin and the other like Molotov. <laughs> <laughs> I don't look like Molotov. Of course you don't, Uncle Joe. <laughs> Officer, you'll find these men on top of a telephone pole in front of Phil Harris's house. You better get over here with a riot squad. We'll be right over with tear gas and machine guns. Fellas, you hear that? The cops are coming with machine guns. <laughs> oh, no. What are we going to do, Frankie? Don't get excited, Curly. Let them come, kid. When the cops get here, they'll give us a chance to explain everything. I never thought of that. Officer, when you get here, don't stop to ask questions. Just shoot to kill. <laughs> well, now that I've done my duty, I think I'll amble along. See you in the morgue, fellas. <laughs> Julius, come back here. Julius, don't leave us up. Frankie, you talked me into climbing up here and tapping the wires, and now it's all your fault. Well, how was I to know Julius was going to call the cops? You should have stopped him from making that call. How? Wait a minute. I could have stopped them by pulling off this wire that we connected. That's all you had to do? 
Now you think of it. Why didn't you think of it while he was talking on that phone? Remley, come here a minute. Uh, I said, come here listen, a minute. Listen, here comes Gangbusters. Listen, I don't care who's coming. I'm going to take you and you. Stay away from me, Curly. I'll stay, stay away. away from you. I'll show you how to stay away from, away from you. Get hey, away from you me. up there. I'm arresting you two for wiretapping. Arrest him for that. I'm going to have something better for you. I'm about to become a murderer. Come here, Remley. Let me get my hands on you. I'm going to You stay on your own side of the pole. I'm not going to stay on my own side of the pole. Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. But first, here's your Rexall family druggist. The other day, another Rexall druggist and I were talking about the increase in calls for Bismarck's that we get during the winter. Why? Well, what's the reason for that? Well, everyone just naturally eats a lot heavier and richer foods during cold weather. And then we are asked to recommend something that will quickly relieve acid indigestion. And you recommend Bismarck's? You bet I do. Why, it's nothing at all for Bismarex to relieve the discomforts of acid indigestion within five minutes. And what's more important, the relief is prolonged. What is it makes this Bismarex so good? The formula, my friend. You see, the ingredients in Bismarex vary in the time required for solubility. That way, certain ingredients go to work at once. For instance, excess acidity is often neutralized within one minute. Then the other ingredients, dissolving more slowly, ease up those gastric pains and heartburn when due to excess acid. And finally, Bismarex leaves a soothing protective covering on irritated stomach membranes, so the relief will be prolonged. No wonder you get a lot of calls for Bismarex. No wonder you'll find it in millions of family medicine chests. Yes, quality like that of Bismarex is what we family druggists are talking about when we tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name... Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Phil, why don't you get rid of Frankie? All he ever does is get us into trouble. How could he forget to pay our bills? You should talk. You're as bad as he is. He forgot to pay our utilities, and you forgot to discontinue the milk. Everything's okay now. Forget about it. I paid all the bills, and now that everything is turned on again, our house will be just as cozy as ever. Yes, dear. You're wonderful, and I... Uh, Phil, there's a man putting a sign up outside our house. A sign? What does it say? Sheriff's sale. Oh, no, I forgot to make the payment on the house. <laughs> this program was produced and directed by Paul Phillips. Included in today's cast were Jerry Hausner and Ken Christie. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis, and Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Alice Fay appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. Winter colds often have a pesky running mate, a dry, hacking cough. When that happens, try Cherisote, Rexall's famous cough remedy. Pleasant-tasting Cherisote brings double-action relief, soothing irritated membranes and helping to loosen the cough. But if your cough persists, be sure to see your doctor. Ask for Cherisote at the store with the orange and blue Rexall sign on the window. And remember, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Next, you'll hear Sam Spade, then Theater Guild on NBC.